What's up people, one up punch here. So I picked up this game for about $16 on Steam called Railroads and Catacombs. And it has like the weird aesthetic of like Darkest Dungeon to where it has like that type of art style of like grungy, kind of dark, a lot of like twisted monsters and stuff. And then you have your train, which is essentially like your home base. The train will allow you to make other things like workshops, infirmaries, a uh, barracks room to allow for more recruitment of um, people for your like lineup that's on the top portion of the screen. And what they do is they come through this place called the Void Portal, and you can get up to, I think right now, a total of four. Unless you build a barracks, it'll be a total of six. And you go into these different areas that are be one, two, three, four when it comes down to difficulty. And the higher the difficulty, of course, the harder the game will get. And your guy will level up as you go and complete on these quests. This is what you do when you first start off. When you go to these destinations, you don't necessarily have, like, your train anymore. You just start off in, like, an area. And you will have a couple different things when you explore. The first thing is at the bottom of the screen, they have the um, sanity meter. And when it gets lower and lower and lower, your guy will get paranoid. He'll start getting scared. And modifiers will pop up and make the game more difficult while not being able to do your full potential when you first start combat. For example, if you go and look at the bottom portion of the screen when it comes down to your sanity, it will tell you that it won't be able to do card draw, you'll be able to take more damage, and your guy will actually visibly start shaking the more he's paranoid and more um, having to deal with fear when he gets into combat. Like, he will actually start shaking his gun around, trying to worry about what's going on around him and everything. The thing is with this game is that it's not only just... The combat, but the whole train situation itself is also its own thing. Because when you're able to do the train stuff, the train is essentially your central hub. Because it will have multiple parts, multiple workstations, and different things you could do on it. But combat is also very fun with the different cards, the movement, and being able to build your own cards from just being normal, um, like standard additions. Like for example, range can have additional damage. Or can allow for explosive damage, being able to attack multiple targets, or being able to do piercing. It can allow you to build your cards up and make them more powerful later on down the road. And the way that would work is if every single time you're done with combat, it'll give you a reward. And you could put that onto your cards, make them stronger, give them piercing, give them some type of elemental damage. And it's a lot easier to deal with elites and bosses when you go and deal with them in combat. And they do some things to you as well, like they'll put red squares on the ground you can't step on, otherwise they'll take damage. And they can sometimes insta-kill you, depending upon whatever boss or whatever enemy you're fighting. And like I said, they have the different types of cards that you can choose from between attack and support. Or sometimes they'll do like a full list of other things like being able to um, grab additional damage with piercing, being able to do more piercing damage through other targets... And then being able to do close range combat but also have a shield around you. That's also another thing it can do. But when you get to the train. And like I said earlier the train's a whole different thing in itself. You have multiple different carts that do different things. For example you have the Railmancer Cabin. Which will allow you to unlock card slots or remove a card slot. Then you have the Workshop that will allow you to upgrade your actual character. Depending upon whatever it is. Whether it's the Scholar the Doctor, the Railmancer, the Engineer, or the, um, I can't remember the other guy's name that looks like a Highwayman, but they have these different areas that you can unlock stuff. For example, the, um, I think it's called the Engineering Cabin. You're able to unlock new carts for your train so that you can make it more durable, a lot easier to deal with. Like, for example, the Infirmary can be the level 1 to level 4. That's the max level. And then you could be able to heal faster and the percentage chance can be higher because the game still goes off of RNG. If you go and try to heal one of your injured like crew members, there's always that chance it'll critically fail and your guy will die because death is a thing in this game. For example, the last cart in the game for on the train, if you have a character that dies, they will have a option to either have a funeral or... And give them an honorable death, being able to like talk about them, whatever their stats were, how many kills they had. But also you could throw their corpse out of the window after you loot them. And that's essentially what the wake room is. And it's actually kind of funny because when I did throw my guy out the window, he just flew. And 
all his stuff that he had was on my person and it went to somebody else. That being said, the full asking price of the game is about $17 on Steam, but I still think it's absolutely worth it and trying out for your first time. It does have a lot of content, it does have a lot of mechanics with the trains, and being able to do the different combat mechanics, being able to upgrade your cards, being able to find these different rooms and picking up wood that would allow you to sleep so that you can get your sanity back without having to worry about dropping down to the modifiers too low. And then you have your beer, which is something that will allow you to heal if you have like super low health. And then the tongues that you pick up, that allows you to research more items on the train. But that being said, I've been one nut punch and this has been another video. Thanks for watching as per usual. And like I said, if you want to pick this up, it's about $17 on Steam. I got it for about $15, $16 on sale. I think it's like a 10% off. But I wanted to show this off and put my two cents in it for my first impressions of Railroads and Catacombs. If you do like a card game and you want to play a game that has the Darkest Dungeon aesthetic, this is something to pick up for about $16, $17 on Steam. But like I said, this has been another video. Thanks for watching. And I do have a couple other games I'm working on right now, like God of Weapons that I wanted to show off, and Heretic's Fork, which I've been playing too. And before I go with the end of this video, I want to let people know that it is early access, so there's going to be bugs, there's going to be issues and crashes if you do decide to play it. People don't understand this because they think that Early Access is just a full release and that it's done and complete. That's wrong. It's got issues and some possible crashes. I haven't had it happen yet. But just remember that Early Access is not a full-blown done thing, that there's still development going on. All right? I'll see you all later in the next one.